Hey everybody, it's Eric from Support Adventure, and I just wanted to tell you guys how to attract the best MSP staff. Now this is very important because MSPs are very complicated types of businesses and um, finding the right staff um, is, can be very tricky. And the job market can be very competitive for the people who actually have the skills that you need to, to succeed in the MSP space. So you wanna take great care in you know, setting up uh, where you post the job ads, how you attract the talent to apply, and the application process, um, and how you figure out from all of the applicants who might be the right fit for your MSP. And then once you start interacting with them and interviewing with them, um, you should actually play, place great care on how you speak to them and what sort of connection you build in the first case um, of first contact with someone from your company talking directly to the applicant. Because let me tell you that um, the old model of I'm hiring someone and giving money so they can work for me and they will do what I say does not apply to the MSP space because the job is complicated. You need creative and talented individuals who a lot of the time have lots of options. So you're very much going to be pitching them on why they should work for your company just as much as they're pitching on you pitching you why they'd be a good fit to work for your company. So let's first of all talk about um, one of the MSP worst practices is the interrogation style job interview where you basically fire out questions, usually technical questions, which basically asks, um, you know, do they know this? Do you know that? You got this wrong. You got that right. You're right about that, wrong about that. And basically you're the person with all the power is going to offer them a job if they answer all the questions correctly, kind of like, um, you know, from your authority. That will alienate some of the best talent very quickly. So say you do manage to get the best talent to apply. First of all, I'll talk about um, how you build rapport with them. I would say that in the job, um, in the job ad that you're posting or the job posting, wherever, however you're spreading the word for the job, you should talk about your values of, as a company and why you're gonna be a great place for people to work and what sort of atmosphere you want to create for your staff and what sort of promises you make to your staff, it, whether it's things like um, open communication, open door policy, um, listening to their needs, helping them develop in their careers, learn new skills, um, get new certifications, stuff like that. Any sort of lifestyle benefits, um, working from home is the one of the year of 2020, you know, which is very, very um, important because I, I think in this industry, in the MSP space, um, a lot of people are introverts, so they will prefer to work from home. And, um, you know, now there's, more than ever, more companies that will allow them to do that. So make sure you put all that in the job and interview. You know, think about what you can do for them, not just what they need to do for you, first of all. And, um, you know, any benefits in your culture, any, you know, your, your brand identity, what does it promise to your clients? What does it promise to your staff? And how do you consistently provide a good experience for both? Because that's ultimately what's going to make your business um, run smoothly and make people happy, whether it's clients or staff or you as the business owner. So I would recommend that um, in terms of accepting applications, the questions be um, not just technical, not just certification-based, not just education-based, because we have found that actual credentials um, in this industry don't really mean that much. The resume or CV that they submit um, can be pumped up in various ways that, you know, it basically means very little. And so what you want to do is uh, give them a chance to show how they can process information. So what we do at Support Adventure when people are applying, they have to do, number one, a written test, which gives them some sample ticket notes. Um, I think that our test for sample ticket notes has about three tickets right now. And takes about 20 to 40 minutes for them to do and it's um they have to write the internal notes on what they would do and also the client facing notes essentially and this will filter out the people who have good communication skills and um, a work ethic that would actually make them want to um, spend 20 minutes applying for a job rather than just uh, sending their resume off to 100 different companies at once you know you'll immediately get the people who are resonating and interested in what you're offering and willing to invest some time in applying the next thing after that that we do is we have an automated um, video system through uh, API called Zigio that we use and they're taken to a website 
and they're asked to record an introduction video. Again, it's about communication skills and being willing to go through a step like this. And immediately when you watch the video, you will see how they present themselves, like you're seeing how I present myself now, and you're seeing how they communicate, just like you're seeing how I communicate now. And um, well, you'll see if they're the sort of person who you actually want to interview and go further in the, in the process with. We can filter out a lot of applicants this way just by looking at the written um, submissions to the first written test and looking at the video um, test results that they submit on our website. And from those two things, we know who we want to interview. We know already who they are and we can avoid that sort of, um, we can avoid that sort of situation where <laughs> you can have a job interview, whether it's in person or on Zoom, it's even more awkward if it's in person because then you feel obligated to talk to them longer. But um, you can know sometimes in a job interview within 10 seconds, if you're gonna want to work with the person or not. If you can filter that out in asynchronous video that they record on your website um, without booking a call and scheduling something with them wasting the time, you should be pretty sure that you want to book an uh, interview with this person and that you're actually seriously interested based on you know the work history they've submitted, the answers to your questions, and how they've shown they can communicate uh, verbally and in writing. You should be pretty sure that you want to interview them. At, at Support Adventure, we present these videos to potential clients who want to hire staff through our global MSP staffing service in exactly this way, because we don't want to waste time, get the candidates hopes up that they're going to actually succeed in um, getting this job. If, if the person who's hiring hasn't seen a video of them yet, because it's just a waste of time for everybody and it gets candidates hopes up. So if you can put in a, a, a process that allows that to occur first, that's great. So, Let's say you've done all of that and you're only interviewing people who you are actually seriously interested in hiring, you think are a good match already based on what they've submitted. And the first thing you wanna do in the interview is build rapport, right? You wanna build rapport and you want to make them feel comfortable with you, make you feel like, okay, if it's a Zoom interview, you see the guitar behind me, you might want to ask about that. Hey, you're a musician. Well, what, what kind of music do you play? All that stuff. That will build comfort. So the first couple of minutes of the interview should be like that, a little casual, and then get down to business. Rather than the interrogation style interview that I talked about earlier, it's much better to actually ask about their experience, what they've learned, what their goals are. So they, again, building rapport and feel that you're focused on them. Tell about your company, your values, how they might intersect and, and you'll start building bridges of knowledge that hopefully if you end up hiring them, knowledge and communication, those bridges of knowledge and communication will foster and, and grow in the relationship. And you're setting the tone from the beginning that you have open communication, you want to have shared values, not just I am an employer and you are an employee, therefore I give you work and you do it and I give you money. Not many of the best talent, the most talented people in this industry are gonna go for that anymore and you'll alienate them and you'll end up hiring a, a much worse grade of talent, much, who have much less to offer in the industry. Trust me, I've seen companies do this. I've seen what happens to them. I've seen how people um, you know, who are treated in this way, um, the relationships that build out of them. So after you build the rapport, you have to get a sense for what they're bringing to the table in terms of uh, problem solving and innovational skills. So rather than asking technical skills, it's okay to talk about technical skills. Do you know VMware? Do you know um, Microsoft Azure? Um, have you ever dealt with any Linux systems? Anything like that that's relevant to the position, don't make it a deal breaker. But essentially I would say that you need to ask how they would deal with learning something that they've never um, learned about before. Ask how they would deal with um, a deadline and a problem that's related to a vendor. Ask how they would deal with um, a difference in opinion from another team, team member and ask how they would uh, deal with a situation in which they um, you know, were asked to do something that they, they truly believed was not the right course of action by their management. Those are where you can really get a sense for someone's character and somebody's um, sort of personality as it relates to work. Because that's the stuff that's gonna actually give you someone that your company can grow with, you know? Whether they know how to virtualize, um, uh, virtualize a whatever thing on a doodad or in, a, in this specific cloud service, you know, those are things that can learn, be learned 
but the attitude towards working on a team and the attitude towards um, work itself and what the important things are and their style of communication, those are the things that if the person that you hire doesn't have that to begin with, it's a lot harder to fix later. Because in this industry, we hire people who learn things quickly because if we didn't, uh, nobody would be able to keep up with the technologies. If everybody had to be taught step-by-step -step everything as in a lot of industries they are, you know, like, um, you know, when you work at McDonald's, they teach you step-by-step -step how to make a Big Mac and that, that consistency of, of training allows them to hire teenage, unqualified teenagers around the world to make um, a Big Mac consistently around the world. So that's good, but you don't have the equivalent of that in IT. So you need people who have the ability to problem solve, figure things out on the fly and learn new systems. Otherwise, you know, they're not gonna be very good in a, in a role at an MSP that involves troubleshooting. So um, don't think that experience in an MSP, MSP environment, it's great if they have that, but if they don't and they're the fast learner type, you're just gonna spend maybe two or three days showing them a ticketing system, how to use it, an RMM, how to use it, and the documentation and how to use it. And then they'll be off to the races because they figure out things fast. And then they'll be, you know, I've had people who are coming from development environments who start being an MSP tech support and rise to the top of a company within six months, um, surpassing the technical abilities of people who have been there for six years. And it's because they have the can-do attitude, there's problem solving skills and the ability to learn things quickly. So you want to make your questions about that. And you want to actually ask things like that. That's sort of like one, one of the best examples um, for the fun. You want to make it fun because if, 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 if it's not fun, who's going to want to join your company if they have other options if it's not fun? So one, one actual interview that I had um, where we were hiring a technician for a potential two MSPs. We were going to hire him. He was going to go to one or the other. The first one was the interrogation style interview. The second one they asked, they had a friendly disagreement in the um, in the interview and they ended up working it out. And, and it was like um, a difference in opinion, but they heard each other out. And the other one was an interrogation style interview where the guy actually told him he was wrong about something or made him feel bad because he didn't know. And, and guess which one he took? He took the one and he was a star candidate. He took the one where they had the friendly disagreement. And also in that interview, they asked about his favorite superhero. So it really goes a long way. I mean, I would say if you're a small MSP, if you're, um, if, if you're, you know, really like less than 10 technicians or, you know, even less than 20, you want to sell the personality of your internal culture, the business that you've built and how well you can work as a team and how open the communication is, how much room there is for growth. And if you're a larger company, a larger MSP, say over 20 technicians, you really want to sell the structure of your culture. You really want to sell the fact that you've already got 35 technicians on board and uh, a really good way of organizing all the work so that nobody's stressed out. You want to really um, emphasize that you know the resources are there for really efficient escalations and ongoing mentoring so people can rise up the ranks, so as level one, get to level two, level three, et cetera, and really grow in the organization um, because you need to actually advertise that you are the right place for them to grow their career because everybody wants to grow their career. Everybody's at a place in their career and they want to go further, make more money, have more knowledge, more responsibility. Everybody wants that. So um, you have to provide a plan for that. And hopefully you're going to be a place where they're going to feel comfortable long term. And if, if you set that tone in the interview, then you're going to attract the best talent. So summing up this video, figure out a way to filter the talent before, um, before you interview them, you know, through written and video tests and sending in videos and stuff like that. Um, don't focus too much on the actual certifications and experience, but focus more on the approach and the style of communication style of learning style of um, execution of the person and how their brain works and how they're going to learn new things and and thrive in your organization and focus on the vibe and the structure that you're offering them. And I think if you take these uh, recommendations on board, you will 
soon find that you're attracting a much higher caliber of staff. Now, if you want to see who you can hire through Support Adventure, we get 50 to 70 applicants a day from all over the world and all over the internet. And um, we filter them through these sorts of tools that I've done. So, you know, we can save you a lot of money if you're hiring locally in the States and, and you hire, you know, some guy from you know, Eastern Europe who speaks great English and passes all our filters, you can save a lot of money from that. And we have expats also who are native English speakers who are also living in more affordable places. So if you want more information about that, check our website, book a call with me. I can tell you very quickly and directly whether I think it's good um, for us to work together and what we can do for you. And basically, I mean, I wish you all the best in finding the staff. And if you also want more ideas like this, about what makes an MSP and, and its staffing and operations uh, run smoother, check out the YouTube channel, subscribe to our channel. So thanks a lot. Eric, Support Adventure, signing out.